What's up and welcome to the first Gizmo Slip Tech video. This is going to be a camera comparison with the iPhone 10 and the Note 8. I'm going to be uploading this in 4K. Let's hop right into some examples. Feel free to pause if you want to take a closer look at some of these photos. Here we go. Both of these cameras take excellent overall photos, have quick autofocus, and a dual rear camera system. Here are some things I noticed. The Note 8 has a tendency to blow out highlights in photos quite a bit more often, but the added brightness brings vividness and life to the images. The portrait modes were very good on both cameras. The Note 8 does a better job figuring out where the edges of Darren's beard started and stopped, though the iPhone 10 found the edges of the subject better in my front camera portraits. As far as front cameras go, in difficult lighting situations, the iPhone 10 struggled to capture my face as well as my background, while the Note 8 again had better dynamic range but struggled to represent my skin tone. Front camera portraits were hit and miss on both cameras. I generally recommend taking three photos to make sure you get one with properly blurred edges, but you can get excellent results from either camera if you take enough pictures. Let's talk about the front camera video. The main use for this, I think, is vlog style videos. This works especially well with a stabilization device like the Osmo or Smooth Q because the front cameras don't have the same stabilization as the back ones do. But the Note 8 has 1440p video recording and that's a big deal because the iPhone 8 only has 1080p, meaning that the Note 8 captures 80% more detail. I both love and hate the front cameras from the iPhone 10 and 8 for different reasons. The iPhone 10 has better contrast and color representation. While the Note 8 lacks contrast, it's easily fixed with a little bit of color correction. If you look at these two shots carefully, you'll see that the Note 8 also has better dynamic range with my face being exposed properly while the kitchen behind me isn't blown out as bad as it is with the iPhone 10. Let's talk about the rear camera video. Like the front, the iPhone 10 again tended to have a darker image with more contrast and richer skin tones. But I couldn't help but notice that the Note 8 again had better dynamic range while at the same time overexposing just slightly. The end result is that the Note 8 captured more detail on my face and surroundings but didn't look as good out of the box. With some adjustments to exposure, contrast, and saturation, I think you can get a video that looks a lot better from the Note 8 if you put in the effort. Okay, this is an audio test. Okay, this is an audio test between the Note 8 and the iPhone 10. Between the Note 8 and the iPhone 10. Okay, so it's a lot windy. You're gonna have messed up audio from wind almost for sure. Dun dun dun. Okay, so it's a lot windier here. You're gonna have messed up audio from wind almost for sure. Dun, dun, dun. Let's find out which one has better audio. Let's find out which one has better audio. Note 8 also struggled to keep the audio and video synced up when filming with 4K resolution. This isn't an issue when watching on your phone, but when exported to an external video editor like Adobe Premiere Pro, the video lagged behind the audio by about a half second, requiring post-processing to fix. You can work around this by recording in only 1080p or 1440p, but who wants to give up 4K recording because of audio issues? This same audio video desync issue happened with my iPhone 7 Plus, though the iPhone 10 seems to have fixed the issue. Here are some sweeping shots of the city of Portland. It's a great test to see how well each camera captures detail and both cameras manage to capture the beauty of this scene. Excellent. Time-lapses are one of my favorite types of videos, and they look great on both phones. One downside for the Note 8 is that you can't use the two times zoom during time lapses. Also, I wish they would enable 4K time lapse recording. 1080p just isn't enough anymore. All right, so we are now testing the stabilization on both cameras. Just general walking, handheld, no extra stabilization to see what they look like. All right, so we are now testing the stabilization on both cameras. Just general walking, handheld, no extra stabilization to see what they look like. So both phones are being bounced at the, about the same approximate bounceage, pretty much exactly. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now and they're bouncing at the same time. Both their hands are going at the same time. This is now with video stabilization on with the Note 8 and the autofocus tracking off. 
So we're walking and Brandon is holding these phones both handheld. So there's no extra stabilization. It is just the cameras and his arms. So we'll see how well it works. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do a running test. All right. Start running. Running. The slow motion is quite good with both cameras, though the iPhone X's increased 1080p resolution is noticeably more detailed. Check it out. In the end, the lack of micro SD slot prevents me from using the iPhone X as my primary phone. I love the fact that this can do 4K 60 frames per second, but I would never use it because it would fill up the storage on this thing so fast that even in just one day of filming, I would need to unload it two or three times in a single day. So after taking a look at all of these photos and videos, here's the breakdown iPhone 10 and the Note 8 are practically tied when it comes to photos, both for portrait mode, HDR, low light, but when it comes to video, the iPhone 10 just looks better out of the box. But if you're willing to put in the work, the Note 8 will ultimately give you better results. While the Note 8 is fantastic for video and has better stabilization than the iPhone 10, it doesn't have as good of color saturation and contrast as the iPhone. On top of it all, we have the audio desync happening in 4K that forces me to run it at 1440p and that's a pretty big bummer. But that's just my opinion. You've seen the same photos and images as me. This is something that's very personal. Maybe you like your photos and videos to be less contrasty and therefore the Note 8 looks better out of the box. And I highly recommend both of them for both the front and back camera. They're awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. We'll see you next time. Brandon out. Woo!